because everyone was freaking out at that point about Tylenol and getting all your stuff and getting like, um, what's it called? Temperature taker things. Mm, thermometer. <laughs> thermometer. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today. I am Mrs. Hanlon, and we have you first, Mr. Alifros. Hi, uh, Mr. Alifros here today. Miss Itner from the Vocational Building. And Miss Taylor from the Counseling Department. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, so today we thought we would talk about uh, the, since it's been almost a full year, that we've been in the pandemic. And uh, this is actually the week before we went out on remote. So that's kind of a mind blowing thing to think about. <laughs> so we were kind of gonna discuss that a little bit today. So okay. who wants to start? How did you feel? How are you guys feeling like when you started uh, hearing on the news about coronavirus and COVID-19 and how it was affecting the other countries and it started to get closer and closer and then suddenly here we were. I'll start. Um, I was in denial a little bit. I didn't think, you know, I thought this could just be propaganda. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. I kept telling the kids, we don't know what's going to happen. This can't be real. Is it really going to come? And then we saw like a couple cases in Washington and then New York and then the Metro East actually had those ladies that were in Italy. And I was like, Oh, it's, for real, you know, and mm -hmm. I still was like, I would germix all the time anyway. And then it's like, the kids are like, we can't. And I'm like, no, don't touch anybody. Now you got an elbow. We even started that before we even the actual week when we had to go home. So it was, I mean, it's like we, I think everybody was in denial. We didn't think it was really going to happen. And then it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I, I remember that was already kind of like a weird anxious time for me. And then hearing all about that, just like totally kind of threw me for a loop and um, just my anxiety was at all time high. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, it's just the end of the world. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> it was surreal. <laughs> right. Well, we didn't know who was going to get sick or not. Right. I'm still afraid because I have a real old dad. So does yeah. Ms. Taylor. I know we talk about our fathers and that's mm -hmm. the scary thing. I think I could fight it maybe, but I'm not sure about him and I don't want to put him at risk. I think that was probably the, the hardest thing to wrap your head around at that time because they couldn't tell you how it was being transmitted and there weren't any really answers. So it was just kind of not knowing. So already taking precautions, like Ms. Edner said, just being, you know, I wipe down stuff anyway, but just being more cautious of who I came into contact with because I do have elderly parents. So it was just, you know, the, the not knowing. And mm -hmm. then, um, I think it really hit home when the governor said, you know, in April that we weren't coming back. That's when it was just kind of like, okay, this is, you know, it, it's serious now because we weren't, you know, we were kind of still going back and forth, like we might come back to school and everything like that. Yeah, I would agree with all of what you said. And I think uh, when it really hit home for me was I went to Sam's, the, the store, and had to wait in line all the way around the parking lot into the end of the parking lot uh, and it was before the store even opened and then you have to stand six feet away from people that was like a new thing now we know mm -hmm. social distancing is a part of our vocabulary now back then it was just like what i like to talk to people i don't know it's fine and then you know you're just like nope stay away um and then for me i think uh sports sports is a big thing uh, in our nation oh, and for oh, me oh. when uh, i think the nba was the march first. madness Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was like the first major sport to oh. cancel and mm. they all followed suit and that was uh hard because we were all stuck at home so I wanted to watch sports more and there was nothing to watch you're bringing back my sadness I'm gonna cry I know it's last it's year my team was good and this year they're not even gonna make it to the big dance <laughs> 
So yeah, I remember Mr. Fulton came down the hall, the sophomores and everybody, and told me they canceled the Big Ten tournament. I was like, they won't cancel the big one, and they did. And then it was just one after the other, and everybody, mm-hmm. like Ella Frost said, mm. yeah, it was like one shock after the other. You don't even realize going how much and going <laughs> a part of that your life that is, and it's yeah. so hard for the students I know because I was talking to some of them. I'm like, hopefully we'll get some sports because I love to go and watch. I'm like, hey, you guys need mm-hmm. that. They're bummed out too, I know, but now they're starting to come back a little bit. So hopefully. I remember uh, going to the last day of school. And I guess that was maybe my, my, my moment when I was like, this is not a joke was when I went, I left school and I went to the Cahokia Walgreens because everyone was freaking out at that point about Tylenol and getting all your stuff and getting like, um, what's it called? Temperature taker things. Mm, thermometer. <laughs> thermometer. <laughs> also lost my vocabulary since we've been in the pandemic. It's hard for me to pull out words, but, um, and just food and canned goods and like silly stuff. And I remember talking on the phone to my husband and being like, all right, I'm going to go to Walgreens and I'm going to get this. And you go to, you know, to Walmart and get this. And then just like that first couple of months of like, never, I, I did not leave the house. I mean, no, no, I know. I still don't go see, I don't go out to restaurants or anything. I'm just like my friends, some of them I want to go. I'm like, I can't do that. I cannot do yeah. that. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And then having all those like different people in your lives who are taking it very seriously and some who are kind of in the middle and then some who are like, don't seem to care real. at all. And- right. I actually have good friends that were like, it's a joke. Last summer we were sitting with them and they're like, it's a joke. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, right. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's no joke. And it was so so funny. Yeah. When it first hit, my parents were actually the ones who were kind of, they don't go out a lot, but they might go somewhere for dinner. And so my mom was still just kind of doing a couple of routine things to where I had to almost threaten to take the car. (laughs) Like you can't, you know, and then I think like in the summertime, they started making the hours in the morning for uh, elderly Mm-hmm. Or a certain age group, mm-hmm. which I told, you know, it was almost like I'm taking it a little bit more seriously than my parents, you know, as far as the roles okay, are serious. reversing. Mm-hmm. And it made me think about the students, too, because mm-hmm. I think the, you know, the with it happening at the end of the school year, we were just kind of thinking of planning and all of this stuff. But a lot of it we didn't take into account, you know this is something new for the students. You know, being adults, we we may have, have encountered somewhere in our lives some type of, not something as severe as this, but you know, some kind of tragedy. But some of the students, you know, teenagers have never endured something like this. So just to wrap their heads around it, you and know, just, and, oh. and teenagers, yeah. so, you know, the society we live in nowadays with you have technology and social media oh. and all that contact to be, shut down completely you know and it's like why aren't they getting on zoom why aren't they you know yeah and the yeah the isolation of it all is just as bad as the actual illness you know that is also causing a lot of people distress and and the poor seniors that missed out on all that fun senior stuff and now this year's, I thought for sure we would be back and everybody, cause I have two nephews that are both seniors and I'm so sad for them. And I'm like, <gasps> you know, and, what, and they kind of, they're guys. So they act like they don't care, but it's just so sad because they're going to miss out on it. And that's a big deal Yeah, for some people. Deal. It's like, that's the big deal for them. Yeah. You know, they don't realize, and that could be like their big deal. Right. Those and are I'm huge so milestones. Sad. You and know? these are two classes now that are going to miss it. I think yeah. that finally hit in October. I kept thinking we were going to come back some, you know, at some point because the seniors, but I think finally in October, it finally hit. We're not coming back anytime soon, you know, and just be realistic with what you can and can't do, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the kids. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I still have some of them asking me about prom. Oh, yeah. And there's that hope there, you know, that may be something. Well, (laughs) I don't. I said it makes you view COVID as tarp. I think, it, I try to think of a positive spin mm-hmm. on it, and I think it's brought um, education to a forefront where the things that we've done in the past, just kind of updating, 
you know, just all, all together across the board, delivery of services to the students, you know, and it's mm -hmm. shown, um, I know dealing with a lot of colleges, it's also shown colleges like test scores and things like mm -hmm. that aren't as important. I've noticed more in-depth uh, conversations with college reps and students, just looking more at the whole student and not just a SAT score or this, you know, so I think it has changed a lot of things for the better because we've had that isolation and that time to really look at things. Yeah, I totally agree. I, and I, I do hope we can bring that more in focus in following years is the social emotional piece and, you know, recognizing how important relationships are and being connected and, and, you know, that's, I guess, like you said, the silver lining that maybe will come from this. What have you guys done that has helped you cope with all of this? <laughs> What's yeah. kept you sane? <laughs> if you want to call it sane, I would say I like to eat. I'm a stress eater, but I was telling them, <laughs> then I work out and it's a good thing I work out because if I didn't work out, I would have gained like the mm -hmm. COVID 50 instead of my COVID like 25. That's right. <laughs> I like to call it the COVID 19. Oh my God, yeah. mine was over what it was. I looked then, I'm like, oh, it's way low. Yeah. I've definitely I uh, caught out. up on some shows and movies. Mm. Kind of yeah. after that. Um, but I had a, I, know, I have a four month old, so he's been keeping me busy. Yeah. So. With all that, I've been a little bit preoccupied, so that's helped. But getting yeah. some exercise always helps. Getting out there now that the weather is is better. We can go out and enjoy this. So that's good. It might sound weird, but I would pick a day of the week in the evening time when I knew it wasn't a lot of people out. And I would pick a store like Ikea or Lowe's mm -hmm. and where it was big enough. And I would just go and walk around just to get out of the house and to see other individuals for that, you know, because you get isolated and you get kind of your motivation level goes down low, but just doing stuff like that to, to continue your routine. And I, and I still do it. So. Yeah. That's, I guess, another thing, like we, that's what we did at the beginning was we went for walks every day. That was like, you know, had to happen. Otherwise, you know, you're just like, Oh my gosh, we were really literally just staying in our house. So those walks were huge for, just taking a breath there and, and just like, okay, it's going to be okay. And seeing other people, like you said, like just, even yeah, though you weren't yeah. near each other, but knowing like everyone was kind of in the same boat and I would walk and then people would come towards us and I would go and get six feet away from them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My nephew would be like, what are you doing? I'm like, six. It's when it just started. I was like, I'm not, I said, get over here by me. You don't, you don't <laughs> know. Cause we didn't want to wear a mask cause we were outside. Some people mm -hmm. even wear masks outside. I mean, at least enough people I think are trying and with the vaccine and we're trying to social distance and we're trying to wear a mask that hopefully we're getting closer to the end or what will be our end of this horrible pandemic. It's getting better. I feel like there's definitely lights at the end of the tunnel and the vaccine mm -hmm. has been, you know, a good thing. And there's always new information coming out, which is, is cool. So we'll look back on this someday and be like, wow. <laughs> Remember back in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do it book. sooner because I'm getting old. Look, that's right. Yeah, not only did Miss Itner have to like walk in seven what thousand feet of snow to back and forth from school, she also survived the pandemic. Yes, I did <laughs> with a notebook with my spiral bound notebook. I show my kids get your notebooks. They're like, what is that? They're all Chromebook, and I'm like, no, get a notebook. We're going to yeah. write. <laughs> No longer gone are the days of the trapper keeper. Oh man, so <laughs> sad. That is one co thing COVID has taught me to do. I, all the, the papers I'm going through now, throwing stuff away because I've learned Google Docs, Google Classroom, mm -hmm. Google Forms, you know, so it hasn't been a bad thing. It's kind of like, okay, you need to update how you do things and delivery of services to kids. I'll yeah. And we've been that. able to see how we can do things, you know, like this remote, we, you know, not everything has to be in person. And right. Um, so they're cut, cut down on some of those meetings that could have been an email, that type of stuff. Right. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. I like when I'm at the store and the person behind me is not standing directly behind me. So right. you like that, the space. that social distancing is nice. I like, you like that. the space. Yeah. And when they get inside, it's like, give them the stink eye. <laughs> You're in my little it bubble. Makes you're aware of their surroundings, you know, to yeah. where before um, everybody was in such a rush to do everything, you know, like 
you got to go to the store, you got to do this, or mm. kids got to go to a soccer game. I think it's everybody just kind of taking a That's a, a really good point. Mm -hmm. and, in, and enjoying life, you know, it's not, which I'm, I was bad about that, but it's like, okay, it's not going to get done today. You know, um, mm -hmm. timeline. Yeah. And, Your to-do list. Yes. Your to-do list. I don't do those on Google either. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you guys uh, being willing to do this and talk and, you know, it's, it's good to, I think, hear other people's stories and mm -hmm. process it. And it's like, oh, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one who felt this way or had that experience. So hopefully we can keep doing this and maybe even including some, you know, some students along the way. Yeah. So I think they have a lot to share and probably a lot to say too. Um, for sure, to get their perspective, yeah. that'd be awesome because it's yeah. hard. Even on Zoom, they don't. Want, some of them still mm -hmm. don't want to talk. And when they come back, I'm like, I won't know who you are because I don't see you. you yeah, turn, I make them turn their camera on for a second, but I'm like, I won't know who you are. I know, especially <laughs> with the freshmen, right? Because we right. don't know them. So right. I, know. I feel for them a lot too, the freshmen yeah. and yeah, it's tough. And think of a, a kid having to wrap their head around. You know, we kind of as adults know it's shut down. You know, mm -hmm. but kids are like well, why can't we do this? You know, well, why can't we do that? You know, from a kid perspective, why can't we still do this? It's like, cause you mm -hmm. can't, it's just, it's a no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm learning how to be flexible and accept that. And yeah. Well, Mr. Alfrost, I know you like to tell jokes and I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you have any jokes to end us? What? <laughs> today? Cause that's another thing. Laughing has been a huge help. All right. All right. I got, I think I got two. I can <laughs> muster up here all right um what is a rock group i forget it now miss hamlin why didn't you tell me about <laughs> it i do but i uh, wait let uh, me try to help you what is a group of rocks no no sedimentary <laughs> no igneous I Are you that closer? I will have jokes Wednesday. Next All right, that sounds like a plan. It was Mr. nice Al. seeing you guys. Yeah, it was Shannon great to catch up. My son and my grandsons. Show my grandsons next time. 